Hello and welcome back to another scintillating episode of MotoGP Mac. Mac have been doing real well this this past week on the on the videos. Got to tip my hat. I'm sorry, folks. I haven't been feeling that well. I especially just like the one that came out about Jarvis. Uh, it's getting the Jarvis's comments of you know there's they don't have enough bikes is getting old. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. Aprilia did the same thing on twenty percent of the budget and they made a good bike. All right. Yeah, it, it, and you know they didn't even have this good rider. They didn't have they didn't have a a, a Fabio on the on the on the mm. on the team, and they didn't have the the history of having you know sixty years of experience either. So they, yeah, you know he can pound that another excuse down the, down his throat somewhere. Um, yeah, look, some of his some of his comments are make some sense, and some of what you just said there, John, like about Aprilia, it does make sense too. But I suppose Yamaha is an institution, I would call it, right? So it's probably a very expensive institution to run. Oh yeah, um, and like I can understand why he's saying that they need more investment. The bigger thing that like the money aside, because like realistically. I think the biggest thing that that he admitted during that process was is that they need to change the way they work. Yeah, and you know we've we've beaten on the drum of testing restrictions for a long time, and you know the way the series is now is that you test during a race weekend. That's the yeah, only yeah. way you can do it, and that's that's ridiculous. Really, so it, it is, but it's. It's the way it is, right? So you can't, you can't, you can't change it, right? Well, you, they can change it. They can change it. They just gotta. They, they won't change. No. It. Let, let's be fair. They're actually like this year. They've taken test time away from them even further. So <laughs> let's 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 not pretend that it, it's something. Hey, but it's, hey, if, if everybody throws a talent and just says, "Oh, they can't be, they can't be done," you know, it's guys like us that got to go out and say, "Hey, listen, Dorna, cut the crap." You know, Dorna, get your finger out of the, the <laughs> performance <ass>. and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get your okay. fingers out of the performance, and you screw it up every damn time. You know. Yeah, so. I, I, I get it, but look, at the end of the day, I don't think there's going to be any t change to testing regulations in my in my opinion. Now, when 2026 comes in and new bikes or new regulations come in, I would assume there would be some uplift in testing amount and times and all of this, but, um. I think this is a very serious thing that the Japanese need to take. And this, this actually goes with Honda as well, Like, is that they need to understand the regulations. And they need <laughs> yeah, you to they ask know it. They just don't like it. <laughs> for, right? I, I don't think they know. Like, yeah. I, I, look, I just don't think it, the current regulations are in line with their philosophy of building bikes. The Japanese now I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they don't they don't start off with a blank piece of paper and um design a bike, but take all the elements that they need to put into it and mm -hmm. design it. So from you know, when they're designing, let's just say the the headstock of the bike, right? Are they, are they taking into count in, in into account the arrow pushing down on the front of the bike do you know what I mean right. like, they the need bike. to get up with a program a modern program exactly and that's where I think the investment actually comes in I think I think I don't think the Japanese are going to cull all their engineers that they have and bring in European engineers and, and change the way they work right so they said they were going to they're not going to, they're yeah, not it didn't going to come to fruition right yeah look the Japanese as as we know, are very loyal people. Look at Suzuki. Mm -hmm. So they're yeah. very, they're, they're like, they will move them around to a different department rather than sack them. So, yeah. what, so what Jarvis, I think, is talking about is like, we need to invest in the program. We need to invest in people. Do you know what I mean? We need the right people in the right places. And I will be very honest. I would question, is Jarvis the right man to lead the future? Do they need someone from Formula One in who understands how to put that picture together? Right. Like Massimo Rivola, who we'll get on to later on, has worked absolute fucking magic in the Yeah. He yeah. understands how to bring all the departments together. 
No, he may not understand the writing or the writer's part of it yet because I think they could do an awful lot better in the writers than they than, than yeah, they have. Yeah. But um you know, look yeah, like for me it was kind of interesting and it was kind of an omission of guilt as well. That that Jar was put out there is that they're going the wrong way and this, that and the other. Like, will they have Fabio next year? I think they will. Um, I think they will, hopefully. But will they have Fabio in 2025? I don't think so. I can't. I'm going to give him one thing, though. And this is something I picked out. Look at the difference, though. you got to give Yama credit on something. At least they came in and said, listen, we are having a problem. You know, we're, 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 we're struggling, okay? We're lost, Okay. And we'll, but we'll work through it, okay, and get better. They're not doing the I'm a good time Charlie. In com- comparison with Honda, who, if you remember, when they had the the, the ride height thing for the front, mm-hmm. and what did they do? They actually came out with a commercial with with um, with uh, Mark Marquez and said, you remember this? For a very short time, they said, we're here to win. And if we're not here to win, there's no use us being here. That was a corporate threat of – you either bend the rules for us or we'll leave. Remember that? Yeah, but this is because we're doing shitty and we can't compete. And so we don't we don't want this. You know, it, you want they wanted everything to be bend around them to, versus you know, that's to be, just to to be oh, honest. Yes. What? I no. would prefer that than what fucking Yamaha did to ev- to every single Yamaha fan this year. I'm like we're solved. We've solved the engine problem. We've solved this. We solved that. Oh, the bullshit! Right, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, do, do you know what I mean? Because that's tre- like what Honda were doing with threatening door now. Do you know what I mean? But you know, it's yeah. It's but like, you don't threaten to say, "Listen, we're doing crappy, so the rest of everybody else got to be banned and and bring bring their program down because ours is shit." I know, I mean, yeah, but Yamaha sold us a wonder bra solution this throughout the start of the year. You know? Two years, oh, the last two years. I mean, we call every, both years. Yeah, <laughs> everything looks great from the outside. Yeah, we've we've it resolved, and then Bra comes off, and wonder where they're gone. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, sunshine and lollipops. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> little, little little bee stings. Um, but you know what I mean. Like for me, uh, yeah, I I would be questioning how is the team run in in under Jarvis but look I think the main things that are wrong with Yamaha is and I I think what's his name Razlan actually got it right is that dealing with Aprilian now he's dealing with a problem solver whereas when you were with when they were with Yamaha it would go on a clipboard it would go back to Japan and you may or may not hear from it now you look at the current situation of test riders right yeah Uh, like Piero on the Ducati speaks Italian to Italian engineers. There's nothing lost in translation. You look at uh, Salvadori speaks Italian to Italian engineers in Aprilia. Nothing lost in translation. KTM. But another, I, another thing is though. The one thing about the Japanese is right. Uh, the Asians in general, they they swear that they're great engineers and they're not. They're they're just by nature lousy. They're uh, lousy think, at innovation, and and I think they're great they mechanical all, engineers. What I think what they're great that? mechanical engineers, but the MotoGP now, part of engineering is a big big part of engineering, especially in racing, is innovation, and they're lousy at innovation. But they don't they don't think outside the box. That's that's because look, that's that's just just the way they are, and like they they were very. In my view, I think they were very in it, in innovative in mechanical. Like you look at the V5s, look at the V3 or the V2s in 500cc, going back through the ages, right? No one was doing Aprilia then came in to the 500s with the cube. Yeah. You know I mean? And like there was, so that's where I'm going with, in a mechanical basis, they're quite innovative, right? Because we'll never know their technology. Like Honda came in with the seamless shift gearbox, complete seamless up and down. Do you know what I mean? And it, as a mechanical device, that's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, but they stole that from somebody else. 
Look, it's coming off everyone else. Do you know what I mean? That, that's yeah, I mean, it's not like, but they don't initiate it. That's what I'm saying. They they no. find it from somebody else, and then they then they but make that, it. That's natural in racing. Like if you look at Formula One, seeing the shift gearbox up and down. Do you know what I mean? The paddle shift gearbox. Right. That was yeah, who made the, yeah, but I'm saying is that the Germans made that or the English made that original. The Italians, the, the Italians actually. The made Italians, that. right, right. Mm. You know, but then they, every, that's something the Japanese don't do. They don't come out on things that from. They don't have that flat sheet of paper and go, okay, we're going to start from fresh and make it. They yeah, go, but, but those things, are, those things are little nuggets, a gold mine, like, like for for me, if you look at it right, that innovation of the paddle shift gearbox, right. Someone thought about it, right? right? Someone did. Someone did it. Someone saw it, and within, what, within a couple of months, everyone had it. No, yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So it was one of those. It was one of those technical innovations, and you you remember that when the seamless shift gearbox came in, only Honda had it. Mm -hmm. Only Honda. I remember they like in LCR there was two technicians assigned. And literally, the rest of the LCR mechanics had to get out while they were working on the gearbox. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was that secret. Right. So, look, I, I think I think the Japanese are very good at maybe not okay, brand new innovation, but developing an innovation. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. And, so take something else and then and refine it. Yeah. It but like and like I have given Handa massive credit for trying everyone's arrow right they may not understand it but they're trying mm -hmm. it do you know what I mean? yes. and that's and, and for me that's that's absolutely perfect in racing do you, know, <laughs> do you know what i mean like you're supposed to like you're supposed to understand what your competitors are doing the problem with honda and yamaha i still think is that they build the bike and they bolt on the arrow after then and the bike is not designed for that arrow. No, exactly. Whereas if you look at the Ducati and the Aprilia and now the KTM, the bike is designed for use with that arrow. You take off the arrow off everyone's bike, Yamaha mm -hmm. and Honda will fare better. Yeah, now, look, Joe, Joe, what I mean? everything together is another aspect of a good engineer, though. But I mean, they, I'm not talking about just in motorcycle racing, automobiles, even even automobiles and stuff. They they're not never were known for being good engineers. Uh, it's you know when you when you're farming out engineers, you can go to you know you don't look at Japan, you look at Germany, you look at uh, you know you look at English. You look at that's Italian. the thing. That's the thing with them. Um... <sighs> You don't need a, an engineer that's good at, for everything. You just need a person that's able to bring those departments together. So you look at Gigi in in Ducati, right? Mm -hmm. He is an engineer, but he is also the head of technical. So he yeah. talks to all departments and brings all departments together. You look mm -hmm. at Rivola, he talks to all the departments and bring all the departments together. Mm -hmm. And it's bringing it through one central source. I don't see that in Honda and Yamaha. Right. It's like a gearbox. Everything has to mesh together. Exactly. And you know? that that is not in there. So I think like, if it, for me, the where my money is on is like Yamaha want to change the way they work, right? So what they actually need to do is they need to have a technical director. So I come to you as an, an engine guy and you're the technical director and I say... I found another five horsepower in the engine. Mm -hmm. He says, that's super. Let me go talk to Sleepwalker now because Sleepwalker takes care of the chassis. So he needs to understand what's that going to do to the... Ch and then, do you know what I mean? He'll go talk to, to Gas Racing as also, mm -hmm. who's head of aerodynamics, and then say, okay, well, we have five horsepower more. We're going to have to change the, uh, the, yep. the frame to yep. this. And what impact is this... So before they even put that five horsepower into it, they already have a plan to understand how it affects each individual section of that yep. bike. Yep. So when they hit the track on that day, they have a potential setup done for that bike. Right. And then they they know. And then we were talking about this recently with someone about correlation to what the 
the expectation of the of the bike is and what is what is going to happen so i think for me i just think you know the, the japanese and all japanese need to really look at how they're they're running it is kawuchi that guy in 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 uh, honda i don't really know but yeah, and, and it's never just one person even with Gigi, there's there's another guy there's another guy there he has to have a little group around him he has to have okay. helpers there that 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 smooth but, things through it's not just Gigi. he's not having the world on his back totally alone he's not like atlas you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, look, look, the book stops with Gigi. Do you know what I mean? The book that's stops that. with Gigi, exactly. But right. I mean, it's not like when they had this new guy come in from the, from Suzuki. If he doesn't have some type of backing, right, mm. uh, along with him, he's doomed. But that's like that. That's my whole point, it's, and that's why you have that one central figure. Yeah. And then you have like you have the spider web off of him, Joe, within mm -hmm. the thing. But like, if you don't put a person in like that, that the book stops with. Yes. You know. Yeah. Like, it's like Lynn Jarvis. While he has been involved in racing and whatever, he's not the man to be leading it in a technical directive way, right? No. So, no. Right. No. Right. So, so I think I think that's where. Uh, where... Is that his, even his job? By the way. I don't know what his job is. That's. I mean, I, I was just thinking that. Is, see, is that his job? I mean, but see, where 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 I think is wrong, or what is wrong though, is that that will currently. I I would assume there is some sort of system like that, but that's probably back in Japan. Do you know what I mean? But that person needs to be trackside. Mm -hmm. My opinion, but look, that's yeah. just my opinion. Now Revola though came out quite recently and I didn't do a video about it because I was like I think that's a bit of a stupid comment to make um, but he was like we can't wait till 2026 to make a change in regulations you know this is the second or third time that he's come out and said that the bikes realistically are too fast for the tracks that they are on and I don't know. I think it was uh, regulations, you know, though, are not going to do it on the bikes. He wants. To, he thinks they can. They haven't done it. It hasn't worked so far in the past forty years. It's always been that when it, when push comes to shove, it's always been push the tracks back, and that's the only thing that's worked so far. Push the tracks back, or to push the things back. But I think, I think what he was just saying though was that he. He doesn't think that the bikes are going to slow down anytime soon, and no. in the next two years they're going to get faster. And there's a worry that very quickly the bikes could outgrow the tracks. And I'll give him a point, and I'll I, I will share a point with him. I do not like to see a bike hit a barrier. I know, but that's been we was that's been we've been going over that for another one. No, it's been um, going over for forty years. You know, that's so, this is racing, pal. You can't get around that one. Yeah, but it's like we've seen it in three races so far this year. Do you know what I mean? It's now becoming a common thing rather than a freak accident. So now, tells, well, we a, had one bit. We didn't have anybody actually hit the barriers yet. We did. We did. We did. We did. Yeah. Who did? Uh, Paul Spagro hit the barrier in. In. No, I thought he missed no. the barrier. He went no. between the spot that didn't no. have. Oh, oh, that's right. They didn't put the barrier in in that spot. No, no, he did. No, there, there, yeah, no, he did hit the barrier, he hit the tires or whatever, right? Uh, we had, um, we had what's his name, Alex Marquez hit the barrier in Cota, and there was another one. So, like, remember when what's his name took him off? And yeah, he but hit we haven't. The, quite, there's not been a big jump in in top speed from this year next to last year. Yeah, I don't know. Well, what, personally, I think it, it is the tracks designed with the what's the name of it? The high high grade tarmac, mm. um, and the bike. You're saying that for so skids, so it's skids yeah, allowed. Does yeah. the bikes don't really slow down? The yeah, high, uh, the high thing tarmac is that is designed for the tires that when you're braking hard, draws you know I mean that you won't hit it. But if the bike is already laid, lent over, best of luck to you. 
Um, and then you hit the gravel and bounce, you know. Um, so yeah, so I, I just thought it was an interesting comment from him that uh, that he believes that the the regulate we should look at the regulations because, um, yeah. But anyway, look, it's it, I think it's I think it's a fun thing. One of the things I do want to talk about is 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 gas gas racing i think are going to be under a lot of, well not gas gas ktm as well are under a lot of scrutiny right now paula spagaro is trying to come back from magello right which look i'm not a doctor but fuck it seeing him lying in a hospital bed a couple of weeks ago bag of piss <laughs> on the side of the bed you know what I mean? yeah That's yeah unique. like and you know yeah. you gotta watch out for the guys because they're like like i said they're like fighters they're gonna come back too soon if you don't hold them back yeah well look like my and this is just my opinion and i'll be very clear with this paul espagro and augusto fernandez have a contract for the 2024 season okay mm -hmm. but there is rumors around that if paul doesn't come back then it's a costa in gas gas Oh, okay. Or sorry, I sorry, I got that wrong in the way of if Paul doesn't come back. If Paul comes back and is not back to his old his old self within a couple of races, mm -hmm. and we know it ourselves, right? When a rider has a big bang, it depends whether they'll come back to their original talent level or not. Do you know what I mean? If they get right, the, right. If they get the there's the, the fear and then there's the natural fear. Do you know what I mean? Right, After right. The big yeah. bang. They don't want to see Jesus, yeah. Again, yeah, and I think so. Apparently, what the what the thing is is that KTM have Augusto Fernandez, but they also have a Costa. Now I think they do have a Costa in in a contract, but like realistically, it could be another year in Moto Two for a Costa. Which I don't know whether it will go well or not. So, uh, so I don't know. Is, he, is there any word that he's biting at the is Sean, uh, you know, biting at the at the at the bit to uh, get into MotoGP? No, you see, look, he 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 is perfectly great at uh, doing the PR spin. So he's not throwing his toys out of the pram just yet. Um, but look, I think. I think, uh, oh, excuse me. I think Mir is in in, in trouble in, in Honda, so I think Honda are going to be looking around. Uh, he's just not getting on with that bike. Let's just call a spade a spade. You know, um, we thought it'd be Rins that would crash more, but it's actually Mir. Um, so there could be an opportunity in Honda for him. Could also be an opportunity in Yamaha, you know, for him. Um. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't see it in Aprilia, to be very honest. I think I personally think we could see and this is just this is just a thing for me, we could see Fabio on Aprilia in twenty twenty five. That's where I think Aprilia are going. Who'd have thought? You remember whatever what you thought was come on in the back of your head was uh, Acosta was gonna do like the other uh KTM riders come up there, go up the through their their program, and then to look for a better bike, and then jump off at the end. Who would have thought that now they're going to go up through the program and find the KTM to be a great bike? Exactly. No one ever thought that was coming. No, no, not in a million. What are you? Already brilliant. I mean, come on. Yeah, and look, I think I think it's just interesting. I think like a, a Joe KTM really, really have a pickle right now. To, yeah. To, you know, because like realistically, while they have, and I'm sure that like they learned their lesson from the last time with Jorge Martin, because they developed Jorge Martin, and mm -hmm. then they only had like a half a million bio con right, con right. contract, <laughs> and you get he went okay. Bing. <laughs> By the way, I noticed that uh, uh, Acosta is bulking up. Did you notice that when you see him yeah. now? Yeah. He's, yeah, he's getting some more meat in his bones, which is a good thing. It yeah, is. For a while, I was like, right, the kid's not, you know, he doesn't wear a, the, a good pair of grips, you know, weighs more than this kid does. How's he going to muscle his bike around? Yeah, you know. Yeah, he, so. just, has, he just has to be careful. Mm -hmm. um, 
because he is still in the Moto Two Championship, so he can't get too heavy. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. uh, otherwise, you know, he'll be in a, he'll be in a bit of trouble, and he can, you know, he has to accelerate and deaccelerate that yeah, yeah. every every time. Um, but look, I think silly season is upon us for the end of this year. Um, there's a few riders out of contract. Um, and we'll talk about Mooney VR46 and Baseki later on, but I personally think what's going to happen in Pramac is is the linchpin to, to everything. So if Martin fucks off to Yamaha, then that's mm -hmm. Morbidelli out. Um, well, you know, you do know that the uh, top rack signed with BMW in World Superbike, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, just to let yeah. you know that option is gone. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 look, I don't ever think it was an option for the factory team. If I'm very honest, uh, I'll still, I'll still toe the party line and saying he's a Red Bull rider and going to a Monster Energy team is not an option. You know, it's. Keenan's who Wafuaglu or whatever his fucking yeah, yeah. is, is heavily backed by Red Bull. You know, he's not going to let one of his academy riders go there. And realistically, Keenan wants to hold on to Top Rack. Do you know what I mean? Because he's his yeah. star rider. He's not going to let him just fuck off. Do you know what I mean? So, um, while it was a nice thought, I, I did genuinely think it would be to a Red Bull team. Now, Top Rack did say. He had an option of mo in MotoGP, but he didn't take it up. Um, but anyway, um, I think the silly season, I think, yeah, Primac are, are the linchpin to it. If, if if Martin goes, there's, I'm sure we'll talk about it now, there's a chance that Bisecki or Ducati want Bisecki on the grid in a factory spec bike next season. His contract is up at the end of the year. Now, Uccio, who didn't is... Didn't Martin, 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 Martin say he wasn't going to go to Yamaha? No, he didn't confirm that, no. No, he did not confirm that? All right. No, no, no. Right. And look, he's right to not to. Like, he needs to... He needs the threat of going to another team to bump up his salary, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but... um, So, Uccio from VR46 came out recently and said, you know, that they wouldn't want... Uh, one of their academy riders to go to another customer team, which makes sense, right? Because you know their their goal is, is to get them into a factory team, right? Right. So in my view, that would be straight to red, or you know, he's like, well, if if Ducati are going to do that, they can give us the works equipment and support, and we will run them. Because they don't see any difference between the setup and the organization that they have versus the setup and the organization that Pramac have, which is fair enough. Now, for people questioning why was Franco Morbidelli in Petronas Yamaha or whatever it was, uh, or Sepang Racing, um, that's because there was no Mooney VR46 Racing at the time when he signed that initial contract. They were, they were only in Moto 2, if you remember, and then they mm -hmm. stepped up into... Right, right. Now, I personally think that Ducati are pissing themselves with excitement about Basecki. Oh, um, yeah. I think they've found, <clears throat> they've found yeah. another fella that... And remember when we were talking about Steve Parrish? The, 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 still, the, I'll tell you, though, Basecki still has some... What, in, in my opinion, he ha still has some some um, consistency issues. He can be like yeah, five get, you know, up there at the front, too. and all of a sudden he's he's, he's kicking back at twelfth or tenth or something like that, and then he, he's up, he's down. You know, he's still, but he's young, and he, it's always his first, well, second year, right? second season. It's a second yeah. season. So, like when you track back to Pecco, you know, I think, yeah, I think he he becomes a major problem. For Pecco, and I think he he naturally has probably more speed than Pecco. Does he have the experience? No. Pecco I don't know if he has more speed than Pecco. I'll, I'll, I'll no, I think so. Him. I think so. I think I um, think he does. But then you know, saying that everybody's forgotten about uh, Bastianini. Ever since that accident, he's like, you know, who who who's that? 
you know. It will be interesting to see how he how he fares at Mugello. Now it's an Italian race, important race for Ducati. Um, they've actually slashed the prices for Mugello this year to try and fill it up, and they've added a. <laughs> Uh, a, D, a popular DJ, I don't know what his name is, but they've added a popular DJ anyway to try and sell more tickets to try and fill the place up. But um, I was going to say, yeah, I think Baseki will be. I I don't think he'll have lost his speed, but I think he is struggling with the with the jump from the twenty one to the twenty three. Do you know what I mean? There was a yeah. lot of a lot of change within that bike. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. that. Yeah, and while it looks similar from the outside, I think Don't just how it, how it is. But I think it'll be interesting to say, it. like he's he's not gone away. He's still very very fast. But what I can see Ducati doing is filling their teams with young riders that are fucking full of piss and vinegar. Will have a go. Some will throw it down the the road. Some won't. Like if you look at Peko. Peko has had a, a similar season this year to the start of last year, throwing it down yeah. the road when it, when it really counts. Uh, and the only difference this year is the Yamaha is crap and Fabio can't. Yeah. Wait, do you know what I mean? If this yeah, was yeah, last... I called that one, didn't I? I said they're going to go back to the, the 22 or 21, 22 settings. I said, it, you know, they're going to have him ride that. He's going to try to ride that out. Well... I think I think personally at this stage, I think Fabio's at the stage of here, hold my beer. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's I just, haven't gotten uh, that saying down yet. You know what I mean? They're from you guys. Hold my beer. Yeah. Hold my beer means I'm gonna do something fucking stupid. Ah no. <laughs> right. <It's laughs> like, <a lot> of <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like uh, yeah, and I think he's just gone gone back to what he knows and how he how he knows he can ride to the limit. Wouldn't yeah, but so. I think that's a smart. I, now on on the other side, I think that's a smart way to go. Go with a proven entity. You know, the only thing he's worried about, and I don't. I know you don't want me to say it. The only thing they're worried about with that other one, only his worry is, I'll improve, but will and the and the uh, will the thing let loose? You know, will he start burning up motors? I, I suppose at this stage, does he care? He's not going to win the championship. Right, 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 right. Well, look, yeah, he, 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 he could, don't he care. The, the image, the the. The uh, Yamaha cares because that's a hell of a that's a hell hell, hell yeah, of a PR, it, you know. It, problem. it is, but it's still the twenty three engine and twenty one chassis. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. what, what it's said to to Yamaha is that everything they've done in the past two years, yeah, work. right. The only thing you got right is you gave them more horsepower. Yeah, but it was hardly anything. It's hard to tell if it was from the they were got they didn't, driving reading it had, they didn't get any more horsepower they got it from less arrow they got the more speed from less arrow they didn't get it from more horsepower per se if you get my drift no 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 because they're using their 22 uh arrow well, i so, did i did no, i i did i didn't that, think they were using it in full effect i, that, I thought they were no, using no, the no, smaller no. 22 arrow no, no, no. They're on the duckbill arrow, so that's the higher. He down. Said, they said he, they, they, he's going back to the more, uh, more downforce arrow that they had in twenty two. Yeah, that's right? the duckbill one. They're using that. No, uh, that throws me off. Now, why would he say he's, they're going back to the the more, the uh, more? What? No, what he was talking about. Arrow. What he was talking about there was. Do you remember the the box arrow that he tried? The, like the Ducati, the make the blend between the Ducati and the KTM Aero, so it had the front box on it. Yeah, yeah. They There's can't the run, they, they can't run that. He wants more downforce in that arrow. He wants it to go back to whatever had the best arrow for package for him, but it, it decreases the speed. Yeah, but he's still showing the speed with that because they've been running the 22, 2022 arrow, which is the duckbill arrow, uh -huh. and they and they do have more speed in, in a straight line with that. Okay. However, the one that they were they were test they tested two, two types of it. They tested, I'll call it the blade. So a single blade on the front, mm -hmm. and that wasn't giving them enough. And then they tried the box, and that wasn't giving them enough. And then they came out and poured them out with the twenty twenty two arrow with the duck bill on the front. They it are still, it is, it's still twelve twelve whatever. It's, no, it's, a, no, it's, it's still way down, isn't it? No, it, that's probably. It's about seven, seven, between seven and eight kilometers on average. 
Oh, yeah. On really, really long straights, like Magellan, I will see a big difference. Do you know what I mean? Uh, or we should see a big difference. Well, 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 yeah, we should. Like the last corner coming out of Magello, it is a fast corner, but mm -hmm. it's not a very fast corner. Do you know what I mean? So we yeah. should see, we should see, we should see the difference in it. But like I, I expect them to be uh, better in Magello or the gap should be reduced because they've done a test there last week, you know. Um and Ducati did a test there last week. I think KTM and maybe Aprilia were in Valencia. That's yeah. Right. So oh, did you check on that? Didn't you have uh in, did you get that info for, for two, actually last year's info in twenty two. Wasn't uh twenty two Yamaha was really down on motors also. Not as bad as Suzuki, but they were they yeah. wore out a hell of a lot of engines. Yeah. 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 They were they oh. they they were, but I, I, I think this year is I th I think so there's there's a couple of problems with Fabio going for me Fabio going back to the twenty twenty one right. Firstly that it, it proves that what Yamaha have done hasn't worked. And two, it, it already hurts their development for the next season. Do you know what I mean? Because you know, it, it's giving it's giving Fabio what he wants, but at the spec the expense of collecting data for the next year. And Morbidelli, it'd be interesting to see will he be stay on the twenty two or twenty three spec bike mm -hmm. to develop Well even I hate to say this even worse, the fact that it might not even hurt them. It, what's going back? To, Fabio's move there might not hurt them if it's in a dead end situation. You're at a dead end situation, so how much can you hurt it? It's like, you know. Yeah, but like, like, next you year. You can only blow them up once or wear them out once. So you, you, once you're at that stage of the game, you, you know what I'm saying? Have, my view is, yeah, but they just have no, like, the 2022 bike or the 2021 bike next year will be three years old. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And performance moves on every single year. Every so, year, right. So they're, they're, in my view, they're another year behind. Do you know what I mean? And are they just going to coast this out? Like, if you're, at, if you're at 24, new regulations in 26, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? You're, yeah. you're actually only one more year of development on that bike. Is that even worth it? <laughs> Saying that then, is... uh. Is Yamaha, or is are Yamaha even more exposing themselves to losing or not attracting top talent? Like yeah. go back years ago, no one would get on the Aprilia. Right. It was Moto Two riders going, "No, I'll do a fucking other year now." <laughs> no, thank you very much. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah, look, Yamaha <coughs> is, is an institution. It has all of this stuff and whatever, but. And I suppose it only takes one good season for everyone to turn around and say, "Yeah, I want a Yamaha again." But yeah. Yeah. are they so far out of touch? Um, yeah. At this, and Visa a great institution too. But guess they had the most titles ever won by a, a company, but it didn't do them too well in Moto Two, now did it? You didn't see people lining up to, to mm -hmm. you know, to jump on the on, a, on an MV, did it? You know, no, 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 no. And look, I just, I just find it very interesting um, that that they've gone back that far. Do you know what I mean? No, yeah. And I think, I, and I just think it is a here, hold my beer moment for Fabio. But the, um, remember, but remember that the twenty two was actually a twenty one engine anyway. Or twenty two was a twenty one engine, yeah. Yeah. But he he can't go back to that. He has to st stick with his twenty three engine. Right, right. They're, they're all. You can almost say they're all clumped together. You know what I mean? So yeah. So, ba so basically, he has a twenty. My understanding is he has the twenty-one frame, right? With twenty-three swing arm or a twenty-two swing arm, a twenty-three engine, right? And this year's forks. That's what I believe he's he's running. Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking it's like a potato patata. When you start doing the years, it's a twenty-one, it's a twenty-two, it's a twenty-three. Potato patata. It's a, you're still at the same situation. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. You're, exactly. you're still jumping on the same. More or less, you're still jumping on the same bike, right? Yeah. So, right. Yeah. That's why I think it's good for him to go on what he knows and what he did well on, you know, considering last year. 
Exactly. Yeah, I think I think he's going he's going back into his comfort zone of the frame that gave him the best feedback. Uh, you, know, you know what I mean? Are they just going to take that frame and redevelop it for twenty twenty four? I don't know. I, but look, they've they've re taken that frame and redeveloped it for twenty two and twenty three also. So. Uh, so look, I, I think it's a, a very, very big question on, on what they're going to do over the course of the the next season. Um, I think the other thing that I'll talk a small bit about is that you know, um, I do think Honda. I think it's big. For Pooch. Uh, uh, huh? I think, think it's big for Pooch to admit that they that they're using Calix. You know. Um, yeah. It's no, their savior or their demise. It's going to be one of the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Hernandez was out as well saying, you know, that um, and Hernandez is uh, Mark Marquez's engineer. He's basically just saying, oh, Mark is his mutual self and all of this. Um, um, blah, they blah, got blah, nowhere blah. to go but up. Huh? They, failed. they got nowhere to go but up. They, they failed literally for 10 years. They, they, if you guys are new to this, they kept failing every year. The bug kept getting worse and worse and worse since 2013. He gets kept pushing harder, right? Mm -hmm. And then they came out with a new bike, which I gave them all the grace in the world, if you remember. You know, come on, give them, let them give them a little time, a little bit better. They didn't. I finally just said things a pig. Um, it's a dead end there. So if 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 Calix doesn't fix it, who does? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's it's their savior or nothing's happening, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Now, years. Actually, I was I was actually looking at there. Do you remember the the thing that I said about Revola saying that the Scott Smart or Revola saying about um, slowing the bikes down or whatever? So Scott Mar Smart, uh, Scott Smart has actually um, put himself into that conversation, and you, we all know Scott Smart. Yeah, you know who he is, don't you? Yeah. He made the regulations in World Superbikes and got shafted out of it. Yeah. Uh, he's like, oh, just change the tires or reduce the amount of fuel. <laughs> That'll slow him down. Anyway, <laughs> th thanks, thanks, Scott. Um, yeah, so it's... Um, I, don't, I just think it's, I think it's a very, very interesting ways with Yamaha and Honda and... I don't know. I, I I want the Japanese bikes to do well. Personally, I do. I want to see them try to fight back against the Europeans because I think that's going to make things more interesting. No. Yeah, I want to see. Him, you always want to see somebody do better. You don't want to have yeah. this big disparity where it's you know good and crap. One of the, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. But they've been doing that for so long. When we first started this, but they've been relying on their rider. To get them through on a crap bike for so long, you know. Now they have to produce. We know when when Mark Marquez went out that there was there was like the end. Yeah, that they, were, they were dead in the water. That's why when they said does Mark Marquez have an out clause, I remember them saying he had he. Can you imagine being Mark Marquez's manager and Honda comes up to you and says, "What do you have? What do you, what do you accept? Anything you have, anything I tell you, you will accept, or we'll drop you like a hot potato." You know. Yeah. We'll go somewhere else in a heartbeat. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Yeah, yeah. I look, I think they have nowhere I think. to go. So, do, do they have an out clause? Yeah, they have an out clause. I, I would think so. I think he had. He, had, I think he'd be very smart enough to, to have one. But look, I think. Uh, look, uh, I also think that. Um, be very hard well look yeah i think ktm would happily break the contract of one of their riders to get mark marquez in for a couple of seasons the other side of the coin of that though you know um will it happen will he will he leave honda i don't know it is there's no i don't see an upside to him because he wants titles he yeah. wants titles it's not the money no no it's not the money anymore like jesus he has he has enough yeah. of that, you know. Now, um, now Fabio, it's a different situation. If you look at the way his, his lifestyle, Fabio's lifestyle. I was still looking at his thing. Craig says he has a ten million dollar home. He has six, seven million dollars worth of cars. All right. He has uh, an airplane, a jet airplane, and you're going, okay. Realistically, how long has Fabio been around? 
Yeah. Yeah. Right? Right. And you're going, okay, let's do the, let's do the credits and debits. Kid, you're in deep, you know, he's in debt up to here. So to him, money's that, you know, he, he wants that money. He wants that Yamaha dollar. Yeah, but look, look, we we all know he probably doesn't own those fucking homes and whatever. Do you know what I mean? And he's renting those supercars, and <laughs> that's the I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I can't. I I, th- I, th- I would I would assume he has some smart people around him saying, "Here's your salary." Do you know what I mean? You can spend that. If you want to rent a car? That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so did Johnny way. Depp, and you see how that worked out. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, more than more than more than. More times than most, that you think they they should be smarter than that and have money, and then they end up pissing it all. Down. Phenomenal yeah. amounts of money they piss down the hole. But look, it's their problem. <laughs> um, yeah. What else? Oh, there was another thing I wanted to bring up as well. Um, there's, I was reading during the week. I, did, I don't think I did a video about it. Um, Top uh, rack the BMW is huge, though, pal. I know you're not, you know. You gotta I, go don't, I, I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's a bit, such a big story, right? Um, and look, oh, I, yeah, I, it is. In, I don't think so. Like, like Reading is about to get fired, mm-hmm. right? Right. So, so BMW were on the hunt for a top line rider, right? You know, they, they obviously ponied up the cash. Do you know what I mean? And and they got him. Um, but I don't he, think they ponied up the cash like Yamaha ponied up the cash. No, the Yamaha didn't pony up the cash. Like he wasn't like you could you could sense Top Rack wasn't happy at all in and isn't happy at all in Yamaha this year. The bike is just not capable of thing, and there is it's probably again coming back to. Um, I don't know the the trap speeds aren't bad on that bike. It handles pretty damn well. I, I don't see the Yamaha and R one the R one in, in World Superbike is not it's a, it's not like the Kawasaki. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. You know, Ray on the other hand, he's lacking. You know, he, he they just pull he just he they're just pulling away from him every time they come out of a corner. You know, but Kawasaki are very open about that. You know, they're like. Like, oh, well, sorry, not Kawasaki, uh, uh, Johnny Ray's chief engineer, Perry Reba. Very open about that. You know, he's like, the situation is worse than it was three years ago or four years ago, or whatever it was. Yeah. It? And look, I'm not saying that, that when I read that Safuaglu was saying that all will be done by Barcelona, and then there was nothing at Barcelona's race. I knew there was trouble. Yeah. I mean? And basically, my view is that Top Rack is not happy with the bike. He probably wants more development on the R1 to to catch the Ducati. He like he can't fight he can't fight him like. And now the BMW is quick. I mean fast. That does it is, top. but they're very open to development. And I have to say that about them. Uh we mean open to development. They're 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 they went their own way. I mean, they have their own electronic system, mm-hmm. right? I mean, mm-hmm. they have their own brakes. They have their own, you know. They do, but then they 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 go to the people like Calix to get a good swing arm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's smart enough to go nowhere to get, yeah get Jordan. stuff. Yeah. So, um, but Kai, so. now it's the first time. You know, it's going to throw them off more than you think. He's the first rider that I can. Think. It isn't uh, over, you know, under 170 pounds. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, why BMW kept going down the road to these guys who were 175 pounds, 180 pounds, you know, walking weight. Mm-hmm. It just didn't make any sense. It chews up the tires, you know. It, it, it you know what it is. It, it's it lacks all the way around having the, mm-hmm. the rider being too big. Well, look, yeah, any 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 kilo of weight that's suboptimum let's just call it mm-hmm. you know as a rider you have to accelerate and and de-accelerate that weight do you know what i mean yeah if you look at like well it's very hard then to find a load of danny pedrosas at that talent right do you know what i mean to to give you the optimum performance of of it so look but they've been having three, four years of having riders in four years. They've got to readjust their program to get them back to a normal size rider. 
Yeah. Yeah, look, look there's like the yeah, I think it's different from like 10 years ago. Just say 10 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Where the rider's weight didn't make a difference too much unless you were really fat, right? Um or you were you were gigantic, right? But nowadays like riders starting off they're all on diets, so you know I mean yes. from a young age, do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? They develop the muscles that they need for riding more so than developing their whole body. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Their whole body is developed. But like they would they would focus on their legs, for example, which would be you see you see a lot of them cycling. Do you know what I mean? Obviously right. it's good for your cardio, but it's also good for building the muscle in your legs to to switch the bike, etc. So and you see it like but then when you look at size difference between just for instance Reading and Bautista, there is a size difference, right? Right. And that's ten or fifteen kilos that Reading has to, to use. So but if you look at the, 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 the lads coming up now, they're all quite light. They're all You know what's surprising? No no uh, uh Gerof, um mm -hmm. he bulked up too big. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. They had a picture of him and he's like You look like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger up there. I'm like, you overshot your mark. I mean, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like, buddy, that's not you don't you don't want to be that big. You're a motorcycle rider. You're not a bodybuilder. You know, exactly. I mean, it looks exactly. that's great for the, the getting laid on Saturday night for the girls, but you know, that doesn't that doesn't get the bike any quicker. It's not going to get you around the corner faster. You know? Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah look, look, it's it, it, it is interesting concept. So look, when when the news broke about Top Rack, I wasn't really surprised that he left Yamaha, um, and I wasn't really hundred percent sold that he was going to go to MotoGP, as as discussed with, with his manager, a uh, his manager's comments. Um, so then when you look at on the on the on the grid, right. where were his realistic options so there was no okay there is a seat that's still in Ducati don't think Ducati are going to have Bautista and Taprak fighting for a championship in the same team yeah. um, and when Bautista confirmed his um, his contract for next season uh, I don't think he was going to go to Honda yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah Poor Lacona, that kid. I swear that kid's a good rider, but Jesus. Yeah. Oh, I mean, or then, or then after they give him that that big break of being able to change his chassis and the thing still doesn't handle well, that's when you do. What do you what do you guys say then? It's like, like okay, I we've, we've done every aspect of this thing. It just ain't going around a bend, you know. Yeah. New bike, please. New bike. What are you, what are you gonna yeah. do? Let's get yeah. the MotoGP guys over here. Nah, that's okay. We don't want them either. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's get Calix to build the chassis <laughs> for, for the new CBR 1000 or RR. Yeah, right. Uh, um, no, I think uh, yeah. And then look, like he so he didn't have Honda was a, it was not a, an option. <laughs> so it was only um, Yamaha or BMW, in my opinion. He's not going to go back to Kawasaki, even though that. He was threatening, but why would you go on a bike that's fucking handicapped? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so look, it doesn't, and look, that's why I wasn't, I wasn't shocked because look, it was either Yamaha or 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 thing, and when there was no news at uh, Barcelona from Yamaha, kind of knew that they they were on a rocky road there. So, my big shock was after all the hoopla about the. Um, Of top rack, uh, say two years ago, how well he was a how good a rider he was. I was really surprised he didn't do better at those tests. I mean, that was a shocker and a half. Uh, look, like there's so much different. There's so much different between a, a world superbike and, and yeah. a Moto GP bike. Like even the brakes, probably after two laps, you, you know, going from steel brakes to carbon fiber, you probably have arm pump already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do, 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 do you know what I mean? Then you have the tires. Then you have like, like, I wouldn't be expecting him to be the difference to be night and day. Like I would expect him a couple of seconds off first test, maybe within two seconds, second test. Do you know what I mean? Because like, right. and to be fair, his first test was 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 a shambles in Aragon when they did it that time. So I don't know. 
I don't know. I think, yeah, I think uh, Swap Waglu was a big, big, big t thing in that for them not going there. So, look, it's a pity. I think he would, uh, he would have added to it. But for World Superbike fans, it's great to keep him in the championship. Do you know what I mean? One of the top three uh, battlers. Um, and yeah. Let's let's see what the season has, but I'd be very honest. I'm struggling to pick. I'm struggling with Bautista winning, and I genuinely am, because I'm. I, I sit and I watch the races, and I say, "Who's going to come second? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that that's where I am right now. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's going to be great. Five or six opening laps. Mm -hmm. and who's going to come second you know yeah. you know, you know, performance finds its own level like I said if they didn't throw Aprilia out of uh, World Superbike we'd have great racing between the uh, Ducati and the Aprilia right now we'd have phenomenal racing oh, well, look, it is what it is but, but they stepped uh, on their own deck on that one and just really screwed it up but, damn. That's it. but that's it <laughs> uh, yeah so look the other thing is today is the twenty eighth of May. Okay. Tomorrow is Isle of Man TT is starting. <sighs> did you buy your subscription? No, I did not. You must buy your subscription <laughs> and watch it. So they have cameras there now. Like last year, they have cameras. So there's a worldwide feed. So you have commentary right. for the full across the full day, and then you get to watch the racing live. Yeah, the one thing I do get in the United States is the Isle of Man TT. I'll get that whole thing on 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 which we call it on TV for nothing. Nice. Well, well, make sure you enjoy it, um, yes. and those TT fans out there, you know, we will. I will try and do some updates on them. Uh, I don't even know how I'll do it yet, but um, yeah, I think like TT week. Can't wait to see to see the boys out there. You know, yeah, it'll be awesome. It'll, it'll be, be awesome. awesome. Oh, absolutely! I can't wait for it. Can't wait to see to, to see the boys going over Agos Leap, etc. And then no word on uh, then no word on uh, Marquez and the uh, KTM. No, no, no. Nah, nothing. no. Didn't think you'd get anything from that, but that's. I think there's truth in it because his manager denied it. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I, you know, it's very rare a manager turns around and says, "Yeah, we actually, we are talking to them," unless they're really advanced in the in the chat. But look, I think I think it, for me, it makes sense that the only place that he'll go is KTM. I don't think he'll go to Ducati. We might, but I don't think so. No, I I I, I wouldn't count them out. I think Ducati wants them more than you think. Just no. for if nothing else, just for the we don't want to get beat by Marquez on the KTM. Maybe I, just I the, the, have him on your, you know. I don't think I don't think have him on your side. There's nothing else. I don't you know? think Ducati are afraid of Marquez anymore, though. I, I, don't. I, don't, I, I don't. Look, okay. Look how well he can ride on that piece of crap bike. Look at the last. I know. I know they're just, but look, they're just not. If he's if Marquez is on a on Aprilia, is he going to win? Probably would. Yeah, is he on a KTM? Is he going to win? <laughs> Right, if, if it fucking does, yeah, probably. Right, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just so. What the hell? I mean, he... yeah, but is he going to win a championship? I don't know. I look, I, I, I don't know. So, like, will he win races easier on a KTM and a Prilia? Yeah, he will. Will he win a championship on it? I don't know. Like, and that's where that's the, that's the danger of Ducati. Um, <laughs> like, Peko and Best are Peko and Besecki are not having great seasons and they're out in front in the championship. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yes. So I would actually like <laughs> at one point question like, does anyone want to win this championship? Do you know what I mean? if, if Marquez went to Ducati tomorrow, okay, mm -hmm. tomorrow he still win the championship because he'd lap the field with with <laughs> every race. He, yeah, yeah. He, look, he he would definitely close the gap for sure. Would he? Would he win it? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Day. I saw. I, I I have to admit, in the sprint race in Le Mans, I saw Pecos not afraid of him. 
And so, okay, I think afraid don't make a difference, you know. I I I disagree there, because Rossi was afraid of Marquez. No, he wasn't afraid of him. He was. He said he didn't like riding near Marquez, whereas Pedro well, doesn't give a shit. I, I thought oh, I thought you were talking about uh, a fear, as in he doesn't want to lose to him. You're talking about the physical fear of riding around yep. Marquez's period will run India. Yep. Well, Pedro doesn't care about that. Well, this, he doesn't have much sense, though, because uh, Marquez will run right the hell into you like a bulldozer. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah, but that doesn't bother Peko, if you know what I mean. Um, whereas, like, if... So, if they were fighting together on the same bike, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it'd be I think it'd be an interesting battle. I think I... I, you know, I actually don't know who would win that. It's easy to say Marquez would, but the bike mightn't suit him. I don't know. We we don't know like my, Mark he's, like that bike that, 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 that across the whole field. I don't think so. I I don't think he'd actually like the Ducati because it's too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you have to remember. Mark I think he just ride it until it's not comfortable. You know what I mean? Until he's slipping and sliding. First time in his life he's ever slid and the thing wasn't going all over the place. Yeah, but then look, Alex Marquez, he is making a fairly decent transition. Uh, probably expected him a little higher to be honest. Uh, he has okay, he has been taken out a couple of times to be fair to him. Um, yeah, but I guess look, it's just find it interesting. I, I don't know, I, I personally don't think Ducati need Marquez. I, I, I think, I think Marquez is at the wrong end of the spectrum for what they want to do for their program. They're more, in my view, in about youth and. <clears throat> The next ten years, rather than two years with Marquez, do you know what I mean? And who's who, what's the next race? Uh, Germany, correct? Magello. Two Magello. weeks. Oh, Magello. Why do you think the Germany? Who's winning that one? It's hard, to, hard, hard to put it past the Ducati, isn't it? No, since I know. They, since, since since they just recently tested there, like. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. Well, <laughs> Yamaha just recently tested there too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just being. A, I'm just giving you the screws a little bit there. Um, yeah, yeah, and your point about Yamaha testing there. Hopefully, I they, think oh, hopefully they found I the base. Think he's going back to his original setup where he's comfortable. He's yeah. going to ride that thing to 110 percent every corner, every straightaway, every lap, and he's going to do. He'll be on podiums again, Fabio. I don't know. I think he'll get murdered. Maybe not on Magello because Magello, that's a <laughs> yeah, he's gonna get murdered. That's a long, that's a tough road to hoe there. But yeah, he's he, not on Magello before. Oh look, he he has, and Yamaha have a great have a great um, history of winning there. But I don't know. I I find it hard to put it past. Like if you look at it, Baseki, show Banyaya. Even Bastanini, Bastanini coming back, he needs to stamp a bit of authority back in the team. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, odd uh, injury. I can't even tell you how how how, how people bounce back on that one. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, I've uh, never uh, heard of a broken uh, uh, shoulder blade. Shoulder blade before in in mm. racing, in this racing anyway. Yeah. But look, it'll be we'll find out. We will definitely find out. Uh, next week we'll pick our winners. Um, but uh, yeah, Jesus. I think the same weekend we have the TT and the, the final race of the TT and the Jesus some motorsport going on over the next two weeks anyway. So yeah. if you uh, if you haven't there there is a subscription that you can pay for and you can watch every single day of the thing not in a highlight show but as it's happening live. So uh, it's best fifteen quid or whatever it is you'll spend. I'm more into going there than watching on TV. To be quite honest with you, why do you should you go know? there? Yeah, I want to go there and, and, and taste the local flavors, and you know. Now, you know. I was talking to someone and saying it's kind of toned down from what it used to be, where the cops were were kind of egging you on to act the bollocks on your bike, but it's <laughs> it's still um, it's still uh, it's still an amazing event. Mm. Anyway, um, right here. Well, look, we'll wrap it up there for this week, and uh, sure, we'll um, we'll catch catch everyone again during the week with more videos. Enjoy the TT. Enjoy the.
the build up to the next Moto GP race, and we'll see you all again next week. Hasta la vista, folks. <laughs>